This is Defender on the Williams Greatest Hits disc for the PlayStation 1. You get six games, most notably Robotron 2084, Joust, and Defender 1 and Defender 2. This is the closest that I could find in my collection to the arcade version of Defender. I've previously reviewed Defender for the ColecoVision and Defender for the Atari 2600. Defender here on the PlayStation, this emulated version, you get the introduction screen explaining all of the different enemies and the scores that you get for destroying them, which is pretty cool. And what I really like about the Williams Greatest Hits disc is that it comes with interviews from the designers. We have Eugene Jarvis interviewed in here. There's photo galleries showing pictures of the machines and also uh, some text articles giving you a whole backstory on Defender, Robotron, Joust, and all these other cool games. But let's get into the gameplay here. It's been a long time since I've seen an actual stand-up Defender arcade machine. Defender came out in 1980 and I believe that it had a button that reversed your ship's direction. You don't have that here in the PlayStation version. You shift direction by pushing left or right. At times I found the controls to be a little sticky, and it wasn't my controller. It actually seemed like I had to push the button twice sometimes to get the ship to change direction. I prefer to play Defender like I was playing it on my Atari 2600 review with an arcade joystick rather than a gamepad. But to play a game like Defender, at times you have to make sacrifices because it's worth it. This is one of the best video games ever created. As you can see on screen, this is the best looking version of Defender that I've reviewed because this looks like the real thing. It's fast, it's furious, it's been a while since I've played this. And I forgot exactly how much this game reminds me of Robotron 2084, which is up there with my favorite games of all time. It starts off fairly easy for the first minute or two, and just like Robotron, which was, which was also created by Eugene Jarvis, the difficulty level shoots up dramatically. The game becomes very challenging very quickly. It's frantic, it's fast-paced, it challenges your reflexes, it challenges your patience. And I'm playing this on my PlayStation 3, and I have to tell you, I'm glad that I didn't have to keep plugging quarters into it. I can see where this game would have made arcades a fortune. It's highly addictive and it just kicks the crap out of you. And to become good at Defender, just like Robotron, you have to spend a lot of time playing it, which means they would have gotten a lot of money in the arcades. Many of the sound effects are actually shared with Robotron 2084, so I kept having visions of the brain things shooting missiles at me. All of my humans were captured and turned into mutants, and I entered empty space and was quickly annihilated. As I was out of smart bombs, which I rely on heavily in the dark, scary depths of outer space surrounded by mutants. One last thought, why don't games sound like this anymore? I don't care how fancy and how realistic they get with the new games, nothing compares to the sound effects from early 80s arcade games. Especially this one. If you want Robotron 2084, Defender 1, Defender 2, and Joust, pick up the Williams Greatest Hits disc for the PlayStation. Works on your PS2 and PS3 also.